Right, today we're taking out this this thing. Um, it's, it's, I think this is a bit like a heat pump. Uh, what it's doing, it's recirculating air into the building. It's basically an electric boiler with like a heat pump thing on it, I think. Uh, anyway, it keeps tripping. Um, somebody's been out, said the board's knackered. It's so inefficient to run. They're just ripping it out, basically. Uh, that's what I've been asked to do. That's what I've quoted. So we're putting an electric boiler in an unvented cylinder. This is an unvented cylinder anyway in here. Uh, obviously, we've got combi block and everything down here all this is going to be done away with obviously this is all built into the unit um that's heat and expansion vessel that's i'm guessing that's the expansion vessel off the g3 side obviously they didn't care about regs when they built this unit um because obviously you haven't got 300 there we've got an additional expansion vessel on the hot which obviously will do away with that but first job is i'm going to get some valve well i'm going to get a valve on there for a start because that's our cold coming in to the building through the water meter that's going to the cold water toilets and stuff and taps and this one's coming into the into the unit so we're going to get a valve on there uh, it gives us control of this side and start to get this drain down and stripped out what we've got is we've got an air hose that goes outside uh, and then this one goes through the roof so i think we've got like fresh air coming in that's air going out i think there's a heat exchanger inside here it's, it's like it's like almost like um like a heat recovery air circulating thing um and then it's obviously heated via electric to do the radiators so we've got a flow return coming out a hot coming out and a cold coming in um that's effectively what we've got but yeah well, i'm not sure what all these are that's like a condent that's like a condenser thing isn't it off a uh, yeah that must drain outside anyway i'm probably just going to drain it through i can drain it through there or through that tundra to be fair um so yeah that's what we'll do for a start valve on there get this drain and get this out and then we'll have a proper look right i've just wedged the fill loop hose in that so if we open this that should drain the heating down i would have thought um let's see if we can do it on that drain off top as well why is that not running probably have to let a bit of air in i'll have a look at that oh there's a three-way valve in there reason that hose is not running is because there's a check valve inside there i was just going to drain it into that drain um but you can't because it's check valve and check valve so i just put a hose on there and we can still drain it right this is the heat inside we'll get that drain in for a start probably what i'll probably do is put some valves that's better in it that's draining <laughs> Go straight into a drain outside anyway, is that going to overfill that? That'll probably be alright, it's probably going to tick along there nicely. Straight into an inch and a quarter away, so we can either use that for the pressure relief or use that one. Um, it doesn't really matter for the new pressure relief off the unvented. And the hot water side, uh, we're going to have to get that cold off and get a valve on there. And then we can drain that tank down. Just get this water off and then we'll get a valve on the cold. It gives us a bit of control of what we're doing. I might make it open a, open a hot tap, open a hot and cold tap in the kitchen, Jacob. And we'll get one in there. Just gonna put a 22 lever. The only thing is if the check valve's not working in the on the combi block inside the cylinder, it may come back up because we're cutting below the height of the thing. I'm going to get a bit of wax there. That's the taps what's that mate yeah it's all right all right taps are shut perfect sound 
I've isolated this unit in the fuse board. Uh, obviously, I've got it isolated on the thing, but what I'll do... Obviously, the electrician's going to come wire the new unit in anyway, but I just need to make sure stuff's safely isolated. Um, so what I'll probably do is put that into a box, that cable, so if anybody were to turn that back on and the fuse board, it's completely safe. Obviously, that comes into the main control unit. Um, so yeah, we'll get that cable disconnected and we'll, now we've got that valve on the cold, we can get this unvented side drained down, which is looking like it's going to be one of these. That's heating, that's cold, so we can drain that one. That should drain the unvented down, that one. I'm not sure which one that is, that might be a return, or that might be the hot out, but we can drain it on the cold, that should be fine. The actual heating's finished up draining now, well, more or less. Uh, I can't drain it on that cold because it's the wrong side of the combi block. So I'm guessing on this unit we have to drain it here. Let's just screw that one back up. What I'll do is going to put some valves on the heating anyway. Let's just turn that one back up. So yeah, what I'll do is put obviously the magma cleans on the return and then we'll put a lever valve on the flow probably a bit higher up and then we'll jig the pipe work back in from that point that cold we're going to end up having to swing back up anyway to put the combi block high it's only 120 120 litre cylinder so it'll only sit sort of four foot tall and then the new electric boiler will sit above it um but yeah we'll get this this one draining in Hopefully this one works, probably won't. The one that we really want to work won't work. No. We might have to crack a bit of air in to be fair. Uh, yeah, you can open a hot tap, Jacob, but there might be a temperature pressure relief on the cylinder we can open up. Right, so this expansion vessel was on the hot before, and obviously it got a lever valve, which isn't quite well. I don't know where you'd have put the expansion vessel. Uh, whether you were supposed to put it, well, you couldn't put it on the cold because you've been wrong. So maybe on this unit you were supposed to put them on the hot. I don't know, but it is breathing in a little bit now. Um, I'll see if I can crack some air into the top of this cylinder and see if that'll breathe in a bit more. Because we need to empty this this tank here. Well, that's just an unvented cylinder, as I say. Look, it's been leaking a bit as well, isn't it? Yeah, it has been leaking, hasn't it? So if I crack that temperature pressure, pressure relief, I'm going to shut that um, 22 lever valve down there. That should breathe in through our drain off tap then. So that's ever so tight in there, isn't it? That's obviously hot out the cylinder, I would have thought. That's temperature pressure relief. Oh, so it had a bubble inside. So this had a bubble inside, so it wouldn't have had that vessel fitted originally. So this was a mega flow type cylinder. Um, so originally you wouldn't have needed the expansion vessel, you just had to keep recharging the bubble um, rather than an expansion vessel. So you'd have had to turn the water off, drain this top out and then refill that to recharge the bubble. Um, that's how it would have worked. Um, but as I say, we'll get this out. And this this will have F gas in as well, so I've had to pay somebody, or I'm going to pay somebody once we get it out to disconnect it. Because obviously we can't just chuck this in the skip, this is like a fridge in here you see. Or I think it is. So that will now be empty in. Yeah, I might go to dish. I'll slow it up a little bit. Too fast now. That's draining at quite a rate. That'll be alright. I'll shove it right down that inch and a quarter pipe. So that, that's empty in the cylinder now. We'll get the electrics disconnected and then we should be able to drag this lot straight out. So when I mentioned a minute ago about having a bubble inside, uh, it would have taken the expansion of the hot water as the cylinder heated up. Some have got the external expansion vessels on, but the mega flow style have got an air gap at the top. And as, as obviously the hot water expands, it gets bigger and that squeezes up into this chamber. But obviously you need to keep regenerating the bubbles on them a bit like you need to keep you know filling them back up with air uh, but obviously somebody's not bothered and they've just added that on the hot which that's actually full anyway it weighs a ton so that's failed as well um but yeah i was just explaining to jacob because obviously i don't personally like that type as much as the external expansion vessels i think these cause more problems 
Uh, certainly in this unit because obviously everything's so hard to get to on it. So obviously a condense hose off the off the heat recovery inset. It might not have any F gas in this. It might just be heat recovery, you know, Jacob. First time I've seen this job today. That's obviously just feel I think that's just heat recovery. The new unit will have a, a much larger cable in I would have thought. I mean I'm not an electrician, but they normally run an armored into them. Uh, so we've got a 15 kilowatt systems electric boiler going in with a 120 litre unvented cylinder. It's very similar setup to what we've got here really. Um, obviously no gas on this site, it's all electric, so we're limited as to what we can sort of do. But the new one will be much easier to work on. And hopefully when things go wrong, like we tried to get the components for this, uh, it wasn't me who came out to it, it was one of the other, one of the sparkies. And I think the, I think he said the circuit board's gone or something, we can't even get the boards for it. Look at the amount of circuit boards that are on it though, the circuit boards are everywhere. We'll get this cable stripped out the isolator, as I say we've isolated it in the fuse board and then we'll just put that lid back on and then it's all completely safe then. So that one there, it should be safe to disconnect, there will be a little tiny drop in it, but we've already cut the hold off. That's just cold into the cylinder. A bit of tiny bit in there, but I'm not gonna lose any sleep about that bit. That is heating. Again, there's gonna be a drop in there, but not a lot. Me think not. heating flow I would have thought this one here sort of freezer part pipe work so the last one we need to disconnect is the hot and obviously we've just got the temperature pressure release to disconnect then but yeah we should just be able to drag all that forward then I would have thought the problem with this sort of thing is everything so special I mean look at that immersion heater on it you've got obviously one of them will be like overreach stats but again it's not like you can just pick one of them up off the shelf it's like the pump somebody's put a new head on it at some point but look at the pump connections it's just everything's like just weird on it. I mean, I wouldn't have fancied changing that immersion heater anyway, really, if that ever went wrong. But that was, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to put our magna cleanse on the return and I'm going to put a lever valve on the flow so it just gives us complete control. Obviously, we're going to have a safety valve, it's a systems boiler going in anyway, but that just isolates us from the rest of the heating system. So, if you ever, ever want to work on any of the expansion vessels right like that, you've not got too much to drain. So, which one was our flow? Oh, they've labeled them all return, return flow. So, we'll put filter there, lever valve on there. I'm sorry now, Rad, your pipe slices are rubbish. That's the second one I've had. This is. It just spins forever. They said, oh, I can keep taking it back, but how many times do you have to take a cutter back? It's literally two weeks old. <sighs> no, no, not me. So I think this is nearly empty. It's breathing in a bit, um, a little bit still, but 
but it feels pretty light. So we've got flow return all isolated filter on there. We've got cold isolated. Perhaps they disconnected out the bottom. So we're nearly ready. Where's that heating expansion vessel come off? God knows how you'd change that. If that ever went wrong, you'd have been cutting a new one in, wouldn't you? They've had to take all this out. God knows how you got to that. What a nightmare that job would have been. But anyway, I'm not here to do that. Yeah, it's drained, just the last dregs out of that. So yeah, we're nearly ready to get this thing pulled out. I was trying, I was going to see if I can unbolt this cylinder out of it. But I don't know how it's... I don't know how they've, I don't know how they've got it in. Hmm, <laughs> because obviously that's, that's the bit that's going to weigh the most, that cylinder. So this thing has got like a compressor inside, so it has got F gas in. Um, but what it does, is it recycles the heat from the building. So one one sends it around, and then it brings it down here on these, or they'll have refrigerant gas in onto the heating side. So I don't exactly know how efficient it would have been. Obviously, unvented cylinder in there, and then you've got pump on the heating, and then these these things here go through a like a condenser unit um it comprises of an electric boiler with copper lined water heater copper bonus uh it looks steel to me with and a heat pump which recovers energy from the ventilation air the energy is supplied to the heat pump the heat pump must be installed in a ventilation intended mechanical exhaust air uh, it's got eight kilowatt immersion heater in it uh, so when the exhaust air at room temperature passes through the evaporator the refrigerant evaporates because it's boiling because of its low boiling point and the best uh, heat into the room air transferred into refrigerant the refrigerant is then compressed in the compressor it's rising the temperature so it's an interesting idea it's like a heat pump but obviously there's no outdoor unit um, but how well apparently it's never worked that brilliantly and they just want rid but yeah, I've never seen one before. Let us know if you guys have. But yeah, always interesting to see what people come up with. Look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's your compressor in there for it. Uh, obviously that'll have F, F gas in, so I'll have to get that disposed of responsibly um, by an accredited thing. And these were just, that one was obviously, that one went to outside and then that circ circulated, good hands keeper, uh, that circulated around the... Uh, around the warm air. I'm not exactly sure how well it worked. Um, but yeah, hmm. Hmm, I don't know how we're going to get it out yet either. And then obviously up there is just all our pipes, flow and return, hot and cold. None of it's lagged look, but we'll just have to lag this bit in here. It's dropping that coil still, mate. Coil well, need drop. Yeah, I'll get me it's breathing in, innit? So all it's doing is emptying the coil, I think. It's maybe, I don't know if it's a vertical coil inside there, I'm not really sure. It's going to be a nightmare trying to get this thing out. Um, Jacob's just gone to get some dust sheets so we can get down. Um, but we couldn't get it past this server, we've had to take everything off, but it is what it is. We'll sort it. But we've nearly got a blank canvas to do what we want. I might have to do something with that floor yet. No, it's chipboard. I think it's only wet because we've made it wet, but I might apply over the top of it. Yeah, I'll have a look. I'll have a think. So I'm just cutting this up to take some weight off it, but that cylinder, it looks to be copper. I haven't put a magnet on it yet, but if it is, you don't very often get unvented copper cylinders. But it looks it looks to be copper. I mean, it may be, I don't know, it may be steel, but it looks like they've brazed onto it, so... Mm. It weighs about, I don't know, that nearly killed me getting that out of there. Probably probably over 200 kilos that. Unbelievable how that was. Allied it's steel. I thought it would be, but it's just the colour of it. it looks a bit coffee, but nah, no good. 200ml of the boiler. Yeah, well, you want to have a bit of, bit of space at the underneath, don't you? Put the top of the boiler. Yeah, I, I'd go a little bit of fire for anything, Jacob, because obviously we've got pipes coming out the bottom of the boiler. So, yeah. Um, we've just centralised, well we've just placed the cylinder in, we've plywooded the floor at the bottom. So we're just positioning the boiler, get that on the wall, these are the brackets for it. So we're just going to put one through, one screw through to hang it and then obviously um, we can screw and washer that in then. Um, so yeah, it'll go roughly somewhere up there and then these obviously connections come out of the bottom but I'll show you that in a second and then all, we, all we've got to do is sort of swing the pipes in. So we're lucky on this wall as well, that's actually plied um, behind. 
so we've got this insulated plastic board but they've plied the ply line the wall so we can get solid fixings and all our clips and our boiler and everything um so i'll quickly show you the pipe with connections underneath that is the blow off the safety valve which i i generally wind them out and put my a-line in we've got a cold fill um basically a fill loop return and flow um so it's just a systems boiler this um still got across a little bit done it but yeah and then all we'll do is screw and wash you that through um and then that's that's the boiler all on the wall these are nice and light as well i don't know what 10 15 kilos jacob somewhere around there not very not very heavy and obviously electrical connection will go straight in here straight into that fuse board solid that minute that ain't going anywhere so this is a 15 kilowatt or 14.5 single phase version obviously electrician will have to put a proper isolator and stuff like that for it in but yeah it shouldn't be too bad I'll quickly run through this uh, while Jacob's putting the connections on the boiler. This is a combi block. Well, I call them a combi block. These come with the cylinder. Um, you do see quite a few of these pipes up wrong um, because inside there is a single check valve to stop the warm water passing back into the water main. Um, so that one there is your balance feed. We're not actually going to use the balance feed on this job. So that one will be capped off and we're going to use this one as the expansion. The amount of times that you see the expansion vessel connected above that single check valve is actually quite scary um so yeah you, your expansion vessel must come this side as i say this side of that check valve then you've got a six bar um pressure relief on these and there's a three bar pressure reduction valve so if the pressure were to go high it would release through the six bar and then you've got a temperature pressure relief which are normally nine bar nine and a half bar i'm not sure which what capacity that is on that one what is that one nine bar uh, is it seven uh, they vary but that's a temperature pressure relief so that will blow off the temperature and pressure um so yeah that's what that is obviously we've got an expansion vessel to put this side of that and then i like to get them above the height of the cylinder just to make them easier to work on that's got the portable one all screwed on the wall so we're getting good fixings on this because it's plied behind so we're lucky um so yeah we can literally just start piping things up now um got the connections on the underside of the boiler so we'll probably put the zone valves there. There's already a pump inside the boiler. So we'll come out, zone valves for the heating, zone valve for the hot water, bypass valve, swing them across, pick the heat in, uh, flow and return up down there, drop the bottom ones down for the coil. And yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. A little squidge of the fitting to hold it. So what I'm going to do is mount the zone valves directly underneath. So if I cut a piece, there i reckon jacob um we're gonna have to put the bypass in before before it though or we can drop the bypass down below and into it and it doesn't really matter so if we have another t there with the bypass on that'd be fine i'll tell you what jacob is so much of a better soldier than i am for a lad of his age i think he's one of the neatest around <laughs> he says this is when this joint goes wrong but yeah we all we all we all make mistakes and stuff, don't we? we all, you know, get ones that don't quite go right, but yeah, it's decent. So our zone valves are going on there. Um, Jacob's just pasting them up, and then our bypass is going to swing along across the bottom and into the same. We've just got an angled uh, bypass valve. All this does, if the zone valves were to short, obviously the water's got nowhere to go, so it just sends it back into the return. So we need to set that at the end. So we've got one Honeywell one that came with the cylinder and one EPH one. I like both to be fair. Um, it's just, just what it is what it is. They're slight, the EPH ones are slightly cheaper, but obviously they come with the cylinder. But I've never had, I've never had to replace one of them yet. EPH. Uh, obviously there's an arrow going on um, direction of flow, which we want to be going um, left to right with the flow. So we're going towards the right. You can, you can actually line the laser up with the center of the tool. It's not showing it. There you go. It was quite funny to put that, Jacob. Beautiful. Yep. Yeah, it's that other pipe that's leaning. Yeah, that, that looks alright, mate. I oh, know. You know, he knows. He uses, Jacob uses these cleaning pads. I use steel wool, but they actually do quite a nice job. 
spending my money on cleaning strips. Nah, whatever does the job in it. And Jacob wears gloves. If you think of all the money I've saved in gloves over the years. Costing the NHS. <laughs> Metal splinters. I don't think I've ever been to the doctors. Even when I dislocated my knee, just popped it straight back in. We're probably going to end up moving that filter, uh, but what we've got to watch is we make sure the coil return is last one back into the boiler, otherwise in the summer it could gravitate around the radiator. So we'll put a T there, we'll swing, we'll swing around from the coil back into the return for the boiler and then pick up the heat and return um, and that'll be fine then. We won't have any issues with that whatsoever. So on my primary return or cylinder return, I always put a gate valve. It's kind of the old fashioned way. Um, but what you can do with that is obviously balance the coil down. Because obviously if you're not careful, if you've got heating and hot water on at the same time, it can rob, uh, it can all go around the coil and not around the radiator. So it's a bit like putting a lock shield on a radiator. Obviously you balance it up. So the only thing I use gate valves for in plumbing now, uh, and obviously you can take the handle off that if you wanted to as well. Um, but you can just balance, balance everything up with it. Obviously we're going to put a drain off tap down there at the low point as well um, and then that will just swing up. We are actually going to put an additional expansion vessel on for the heating as well because the one inside the boiler is not very big so we're putting a 12 litre one. So that's our returns all connected into the boiler. The one thing with doing it like that with the Magna Clean, we've only put the Magna Clean on the heating side is what I'm going to say. We are going to clip them, clip them up as well the same. Um, but there is a secondary filter in the boiler so I know this bit technically isn't filtered but it's a brand new cylinder and there is a filter inside the boiler anyway. So that's picking up all the heating water and obviously we can dose from there as well. It's just we wanted that valve on there so we could isolate that return off. Um, so you can basically valve everything off from the whole system on this point. So yeah, I've just pulled a, a bend for the flow um, down to the coil and we've just got the combi, com, combi valve and that's set. What we're thinking, rather than using that fill link in there, we're just going to put our own, own extended fill loop down here because I think it'll, I think it'll be easier and it'll look better. Um, and we'll probably just put a drain off tap on there under the boiler on that one. That's the piece I've just bent in. Um, sorry, mate. I've left it too long at the bottom. Now. That's why you shouldn't guess anything. Uh, yeah, I need to put slightly more of a kick on that to kick it back in. And then we'll just line the clips through, Jacob. Made a Sunday lunch yesterday. Sunday dinner. Yeah, what did you have? Beef? Yeah. And I'll tough the roast potato if you listen. Listen well. Listen well to the crunch on it. Yeah, I have my auntie and uncle around. Listen, I'll grab the protect. That's why all, all, all was there. I got it stuck. <laughs> That's the feet pretty nice. Better than what we had at Christmas, then. Those are better than what I had at Christmas, because I also made the Christmas ones as well. to twist it back a little bit but yeah get the idea so that's our fuel loop connection onto the return uh, from from the cold onto the return and we've got to put the double check valve one on the cold side it's a pet hate of mine when people put it on the heating side um, so obviously you get a double check valve one to protect the cold water main any fluid categories going back any you know any rubbish going back into the main and that one goes on the heating side so Jacob's just soldering that up and our combi block we're going to swing back out the bottom and we're going to put our combi block there above the cylinder it just makes it easier to work on or i think it does rather than having it tucked right down at the bottom so we've just screwed our additional expansion vessel bracket on down there and we'll probably put the drain off tap underneath there to be fair so we'll swing it out of the return drain off tap underneath that'd be absolutely fine i don't know why they put that metal plate on because there's all timber behind but hey ho it is what it is because the old the old vessel were down there Sorry? Nah, I'm just talking to myself, Jacob. You know. Look how clean Jacob's banner is compared to my one. That's how clean my hands are Squeaks it'll leak. 
mind you, I've had mine quite a few years. Absolutely lathered in jet blue. It's probably because you use the, uh, the flux, uh, the um, jet blue with the um, brush. the brush. Probably is better to be fair. Uh, always keep the combi valve above above the cylinder. This box, this box thing is moving anyway. That'll be fine, Jacob. And then we'll just have to swing it back down, but still sooner have it there than down there. Discharges, we can keep within 600 of each other. Yeah, that'll be alright. He's been influenced a lot by social media. You've probably seen other plumbers using these now. The Weir a Joker, Ratchet, the do a 15 one and a 22mm one. I'm using my noob spanner still, as somebody called it. <laughs> <laughs> my six quid uh, monument or whatever it is that, that is nice though to be fair that ratchet is nice am we allowed to touch it jacob with gloves <laughs> yeah, it's a nice bit of kit how much was that um what, 45 40, 37, quid. 37 quid no it is nice um but yeah Expensive but nice. Put a drain off tap underneath the potable expansion vessel just so you can switch the water off and you can literally empty it out uh, straight into the tundish if you wanted. You put a piece of hose on there straight into the tundish, just makes life a little bit easier. <laughs> And we just let it cool completely and then we just go over it with a wet rag once it's all gone off. Beautiful. In fairness, them cleaning strips do shine it up quite nice. They know we've got to lag all the pipe anyway, but we all like to see shiny pipes, don't we? So yeah, the lagging will cover it. Soldering's not, well it's not bad, it's not perfect, but generally I don't get too many leaks, generally, obviously everybody gets leaks, looks alright. I soldered this one out of position because I didn't want to melt the check valve in the combi pipe. But it'll go something like that when it's cooled down. Obviously when we're doing our clips we just want to line, make sure if it's lined up just because it looks so much neater. Yeah. I'm buying straight through there. Just line us up straight down there and we'll just drop that onto the cold feed. Obviously a drain off tap at the bottom so we can drain it. Um, and yeah, look how much this is condensing. Not leaking, that's just condensation, so we need to lag all that cold pipe work. Obviously, it's all on the meter, all on the ink we main. It's everywhere, isn't it? Mm. So Jacob's just soldering up the flow. This is the coil inside the flow. Um, so that's what heats the water. We'll put an auto air vent on the top. Um, that's the cylinder stack connection, which you haven't actually sent me the cylinder for some reason. Um, apart from that, we've just got the hot to do and then just the flow to tie in onto the thing and then lag and flush. Um, and then just the PRVs and stuff, but yeah, we're working them in. Sometimes on these, you get a lot of heat drag on the cylinder. So the heat will drag the, you know, the, the cylinder will drag the heat away from the flame. Um, so you just have to make sure they solder properly. I was going to bend all that up in one, but I've messed my uh, measurement up there. I've got it centre of the bend, I obviously just measured it wrong don't mind that's why they invented sockets in it you just got the flow to link in then probably just got to move that lever valve up a little bit and then just discharges and lag it and then we can go home oh we probably won't get the lagging done today but 
It's all going wrong now, isn't it? We can get this cylinder filled up now. You put that drain off in, don't you, at the bottom? Yeah. We'll sort that in a minute. Oh, yeah, it's not too bad. We haven't tightened that up yet. To be fair, we haven't got the discharges done either yet, but we can leave it off tonight. That 120 litres, it'll probably take seven minutes to fill all the thought. What? It's been a bit now, it will turn up. Turn it back on. Okay, right, mate. We just have to make sure there's no taps open. Just leave it shut anyway. Oh yeah, they leave it shut. We've got to leave it on the whole out there. Normally what I do is crack it through the PRV because otherwise you just end up with trapped air in the top. But obviously we haven't really got that connected yet. My mate's gone to open a tap, so that will that will draw the air out the top of the cylinder. And I've just got the heating to fill up then, and then discharge it. Looks alright. It doesn't look too bad. Literally everything is dripping in condensation. It's hard to tell if you've got a leak. Even on the new coal pop, I don't know why it's dripping so much. It's literally everything sweating. Even on the, look at how much the coal coming in. Obviously we're going to lag this, but, I don't know. It's sweating, isn't it? You do get condensation, but it's quite a lot of that, to be fair. Dripping in the stuff. Right, I'll put a bit of pressure in the heating system. Might take long just to fill this pipe work. Oh, solder joint leaking. Put a little bit more in, Jacob, it won't matter. Put it up to two bar. Is that, is that, is that we only got one and a half bar in? That's fine, we only got one and a half bar in the main anyway. But right, that's full then. That's full, that's full. It won't leak and it was just flushing itself out, won't it, Jacob? <sighs> Don't worry about it. If that's the worst we ever get, we'll be lucky. Um, it's been a long day to be fair as well, hasn't it? So we'll have a tidy up now. We can do the discharges when we come back. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just knock. That one off for the time being and that's everything safe in it right i'm getting there with it i'm just finishing lagging off the pipes jacob's just ran the discharge in this one off the boiler just goes straight through the wall and is turned back but i'll unvent it um these have got to be maximum 600 on d1 obviously that one's straight into the t and a minimum of 300 on d2 but what we've done is just put a sweat bend elbow there and it just goes straight out the wall behind the cylinder using the old hole so yeah i've just got to finish lagging up the electrician's been in um Started wiring up, but you need to break or something for the fuse board. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to test this probably today, uh, but we're starting to get all the heating controls and stuff. So yeah, once we finish lagging it, we'll just we'll just go, and then um, yeah, once he's wired it up, we can test it all then. Right, that's us all lagged up and done. We can do no more obviously until we get some power on. I just want to quickly show you this. This is my new gadget, 19 quid off Amazon. This is a. Does it even work? <laughs> Did use it the other day. There you go, it's just a label right there. You've got an app. Um, not good with technology. This is called Nimbot D10, this one. So, you can literally just put in hot water, done. Um, how do we print that? There's a print button somewhere. You can make it bigger as well. It's a little bit hard to do one handed. You can change the style of the font, but I'll just do this as a a thingy so you can position it where you want it on your label but i can't remember how to print um scan barcode print oh there's a print button right there lot and you can adjust it how you want it on the label and you print it at that there you go look we can label up the valves and we'll just change it to heating Heating, put it in the middle, done.
print. Yeah, happy with that. So yeah, we just label the valves up. Um, and yeah, it was 19 quid. The labels for it are dead cheap as well, they're just like stickers. But I thought that was a good bit of kit, really. There you go, look how professional that doesn't look now. Um, as I say, we will be back to this job because obviously we need to run it up and stuff, but uh, nothing more we can do until the others get done. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. All the support is greatly appreciated, and we'll catch you next week. We've just come to power this boiler up, it's just gone with an almighty bang. Um, basically, we've got we've disconnected the load side out of the terminals, and the elements are going straight to earth. So, the elements Three are elements. Naked. Absolutely goose. Straight down to earth. Yeah, um, so that's knackered. That's another one of these gone um, that were fitted. Um, yeah, I can't say too much. I just phoned them up. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I just phoned them up and they're going to send me a new boiler. Because um, there's no fault finding you can do on it. It's knackered. Um, but obviously, that's me out of pocket again. It's the day after I'm filming this now. Uh, I've calmed down a little bit. I was in a little bit of a shock yesterday uh, when that happened because it literally blew up in my face. My ears were ringing for about three hours after. It was one of the loudest bangs I've ever heard. It was directly, they just literally flashed across me. Um, obviously, it's not our fault again, um, but it's, a, it's, it's an issue and that, that, was, that was scary. That was one of probably the scariest moments about in my career. It just shows you how quick things can go wrong, even if it's not your fault. Um, so yeah, obviously I've contacted the manufacturer, uh, they're sending me a new unit out, but I had uh, I fitted quite a few of them before, and I've never had an issue with one. I had an issue with one before Christmas, but it was just a paddle switch. And I know what you guys will say, why did you fit another one? Well, I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I mean, they didn't actually pay me when they said they were, so I probably shouldn't, they probably didn't deserve it. But it was, it was for the same client that we fitted the last one, and they wanted the same units across all their you know all their places um which is fair enough i mean i'm not going to turn work away just because i had a slight hiccup on one job but yeah that that was proper scary and it did i had to when it happened i actually had to go outside and calm myself down a little bit because i was i was shook up i think anybody would be um not not shocked in the literal sense i wasn't i wasn't harmed physically but apart from my ringing in my ears but yeah it was just almost like when you have a near miss when you're driving or something like that you know what i mean it's just yeah i didn't sleep at all last night i mean i got i got a gas egg inspection today which i was worried about um but yeah it's just another thing on my mind obviously i'll get that job sorted for the customer they're sending me a new unit out but i'm going to be really nervous obviously the electrician said he'll come with me to to switch it on basically because i said i'm going to be really nervous about switching it on um in case it goes bang obviously there's nothing wrong with the cable it's, i'm not an electrician it was all like it's all on a 63 amp supply it's got the crate breakers everything like that goes through the correct isolator as soon as we disconnected the load out of the unit it was fine um, so it's something gone wrong inside the unit and it literally it was, I, I was surprised it didn't get archived the flash was the flash was huge it was just a strong burning smell and bang all, all, it was like a firework going off in the air um but yeah, that's what happened. Uh, it shouldn't have happened. Um, and I'll try and make sure that it doesn't happen again. I'll speak to the manufacturer. I've already spoken to the rep. Um, he didn't really say a lot of well, nothing he can say really, is it? But obviously they want the uni back so they can find out what's gone wrong with it. But they say that, that could have killed somebody. 